using the Platform Labeler plugin in Jenkins. When you're first setting up agents on a Jenkins controller, you're probably used to adding labels to those agents that usually have either the operating system or the system architecture. But did you know that there's a plugin to help automate that? It's called the Platform Labeler Plugin. Here's today's starting point. I have a Jenkins LTS controller version 2.414.3. Attached to this controller, I have three different agents. Now, before we take a look at the agents, let's go in and review the documentation for the Platform Labeler Plugin. What we can see here is it adds labels to Jenkins agents based on characteristics of the operating system running the agent. Let's go down and take a look at the Debian 12 option. So if we have a Debian 12 based operating system, what we should expect to see is a label for Debian, a label for 12, and a label for AMD64, and some mashup of all of those different labels. Now, if we scroll to the bottom of the documentation, what we're going to see is two lines. The types of labels can be configured globally and per agent with the automatic platform label setting. Also, if you want to reduce the set of labels defined for an agent, then you go ahead and activate the automatic platform labels in the node property section and select the desired label types. So before we look and see how our agents are already set up, I've already installed the platform labeler plugin on my controller. Let's go review that installation. So we'll go to dashboard, manage Jenkins, plugins, we'll go to installed and let's look for platform. And we'll see that platform labeler plugin is already installed. If you're wanting to use this feature and this plugin is not installed, you'll have to first install it. Next, let's go over and take a look at the global configuration for this plugin. So again, manage Jenkins, system, and let's scroll down to the platform labeler section. What you'll see here by default is we have seven different checkboxes. By default, all of the checkboxes are always checked. For the first one, we'll generate a label with the OS architecture. The other one is the name, the version, and other options that take those values and put them together, such as architecture and name. So since this plugin is already installed and I've left all of the default global configuration, let's go take a look at our three different agents. We'll go ahead and go back to the dashboard. Let's click into agent one. Now you can tell from the names of the agents that they're just generic to me. So agent one, agent two, and agent three. So I have no way of knowing what these three different agents are. By clicking to agent one, what I'll see is 8.8 .8, Alma, Alma-88, AMD64, AMD64 Alma, and then finally AMD64-Alma-8.8. So by leaving all of the checkboxes checked in the global configuration, these are all the different labels that are automatically generated for me. But let's go take a look at the configuration for this agent. If I click on configure, when we take a look at the labels field, there are no labels defined in this field. We'll come back and revisit that in just a few moments. Let's go take a look at Agent 2. You can see here that I'm running Raspbian as the OS. It's running on ARM. And then finally for Agent 3, we can see here that we're running Windows 10 on AMD64. Let's go ahead and go back over to Agent 1 and let's reconfigure Agent 1. We'll go to Configure and down at the bottom, we're going to check Automatic Platform Labels. This is going to allow us to override the global configuration. So when we check that, we have all seven values checked. Let's go ahead and uncheck all of the items except for the last one where it has the architecture, name, and version, and click on Save. Now what we can see is the only label that exists is AMD64 Alma 88. So just by setting that, if we wanted to be able to target a label without having to type all of this in, this is coming in from the actual architecture of the agent. I'm not having to type it out or figure it out myself. It's just being provided for me. Let's also go back over and take a look at Agent 2. We can see that nothing changed there because we did not actually make any changes directly to Agent 2. The same thing applies to Agent 3. The only change that we've made is to Agent 1. Now remember that the labels field was blank. So let's go back over to Agent 1, and let's say we want to add a specific label for this agent. So if I go ahead and paste in a label, this is the special label, and click on Save, we can now see that not only do I have the automatically generated label that comes from Platform Labeler, but I also still have the label that I just defined. So now I get the best of both worlds. I get some automatic labels from Platform Labeler, plus I can go ahead and define any labels that I want for agents. Now in the end, you might come back to this and say, I only want the global platform labeler options to apply. Well, what I would do is go back into configure, uncheck this box. By unchecking that box, now the global values are gonna be applied from platform labeler. And when I click on save, all of the labels come back, plus the label that I still manually defined 
for this agent. If you have any questions or comments, you can reach out to us on Twitter at CloudBees. If this video was helpful to you, give us a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to CloudBees TV yet, why not? Take a moment, click on that subscribe button, and then ring that bell, and you'll be notified anytime there's new content available on CloudBees TV. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.